In the last video, we bought a car sight unseen off Facebook because I'm an idiot. It's got an incredibly shady past, and here it is, a 2004 VW Touareg in relatively good condition, but it has its fair share of problems. First one being the amount of smoke that comes out of the back of it. The panels do not line up. There's scratches all over it, and then the big hitter. Hampshire Constabulary information in the car showing that the vehicle had been recovered at some point from being stolen. But doing a HPR report on the car did not show any signs of it being stolen, nor it being written off. But the V5 showing that there is a damage marker on the car. Thankfully, the guys at eManual Online have sent down a manual for this. So use code Jamie22 with the link in the description, get you 22% off. Over 2.5 million repair manuals and over 5.5 million happy clients, eManuals Online is the only place to get your repair and maintenance manuals down from cars to engine specific manuals all the way over to motorbike manuals to keep up with all of your prized possessions you are able to get every single manual you could ever want at your fingertips but today we find out if this car is actually salvageable whether we can fix this thing because as you saw by the last video there is plumes of smoke falling out the back of this thing it is ridiculous you're about to see it go on the low loader and yeah the amount of smoke coming out of the back of this thing is so worrying hopefully it's not all bad news though hopefully there is some salvageable parts in that engine bay because hopefully it's just the turbo hopefully the turbo is the only thing that's actually gone on this vehicle but today watch to the end of the video we're gonna find out after checking there is actually some oil in the engine bay we fired it up to get it ready to go on the low loader where it was I couldn't actually get it situated for when the truck came so we started accelerating onto the low loader and unfortunately the vehicle didn't actually have enough power to put itself on to the back of the truck so we had to winch it on thankfully the winch was powerful enough to actually get this on the back we of course had to pester our friends at the garage to get this thing in and checked over the first task was to actually get the vehicle in with seriously reduced power it was quite hard to actually get this thing in and as you can see by the turbo getting slightly hotter more of the smoke started to pour out the back of this thing and actually completely cloud the workshop so we had to hold fire for a few minutes and relieve the workshop of its smoke first thing we're going to do today is revert back to our e-manual online and actually see a breakdown of the turbocharger what needs to come off how many bolts are hidden which will make life so much easier in the long run with a full breakdown of what's needed to come off to get this turbocharger out of the engine bay. Once all the smoke had gone, we lifted the car into the air and started taking the under tray off so we can get to all the turbo feed lines and the intercooler in the later part of the video. Under trays off, we put the car back on the ground to start taking off the oil feed lines. We can see that we need to remove return oil lines and disconnect the rear coolant pipe, which was really easy to find because we had reverted back to that e-manual online. Then removing bolts, as you can see from the arrows, just there next to the turbocharger able to get them bolts out really quickly with those bolts out and to one side start to deconstruct bits around the turbocharger pulling the air filter out surprisingly not as bad as i thought it would be again this is a genuine 77,000 mile car so it wasn't as bad as we have seen in the past but weirdly we found this uh, just under the engine so someone else has definitely been in here prior to us next up was lifting the engine off of its mount so we can release the mount thankfully after that the engine mount was out of the car and we were able to get underneath again and start taking these bolts out which would have been harder to find if we didn't have the e-manual online showing us exactly where every single bolt was turbocharger out of the car and as you can see there is a lot of oil there is a lot of play within the turbocharger as you'll see George giving it a wiggle and yeah this turbo is fully blown but it means that we can now get the new one into the vehicle obviously unwrapping the new one fantastic feeling knowing that there is a new brand new turbocharger going on this vehicle we'll put that on the front ready for the turbo to go into the car reverting back to our e-manual online we were able to retrace our steps making sure every single bolt goes back where it should 
fitting the turbo back up into the car. Tightening all the bolts up again as we just taken them all off. Replacing all of the feed lines and coolant lines and dropping the engine back down onto its mount. Thankfully this time round there is a charge back I can do on the old turbo unit so we should get around 180 to 200 pounds back by sending this back. I put a new oil and air filter in because I don't know the history of this vehicle and of course turbo had gone. Just finishing up the last turbo lines there and putting that new air filter in. Next up was draining all of the oil out of the rest of the system. As you can see this is the intercooler pipe and the amount of oil coming out of that intercooler pipe is hilarious. Because we wanted to drain everything out prior to cleaning the system out just let that drip out as much as it can then we'll go through and completely clean all of that. Then taking the sump plug out, I noticed something. So just chatting with Dan, Hello. Um, <laughs> you were just saying that the oil, there's not a lot in there, is there? No, most of the oil is I think in the exhaust or come out of the exhaust, it's it's let go. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you were just saying oil starvation would have been the next thing. Oh yeah, yeah you thing, would have had so. a pressure warning light on next. I mean, you would have been, you would have been having oil issues anyway because there's not enough really to be picking up. But I mean, yeah, we've got what? Really, a not a lot. A bit now in the bottom of that. In a vehicle like this is is not a good sign, is it? So, no. um, I'm glad that, of course, you're going to do this anyway. You're going to drain drain the oil out. Just to, we also wanted to see what the colour was like, and it is consistent Typ with a diesel, I think. Typical diesel black. Yeah. It's just, it probably Which is fine. Straight in, and it could be the same after. But the amount of oil is quite hilarious, I think. <laughs> so to come around the back and show you guys as well the amount of oil that's gone through the system and in the exhaust that's the exhaust tip at the moment see that so there must be as we were just chatting there's basically cats at the front coming down to no boxes and then a huge call it a suitcase box is that what you were calling it yeah. suitcase box at the back so there must be an absolute ton of oil in here as well so um i think my professional opinion is to lock the back box off because I think that's the right thing to do anyway. Well, that's what's gonna happen. So next up was, of course, taking that bat box off. There's no other boxes other than the cats in this system. And I wanted to put a little bit of a different exhaust style coming out of the back of this. So this is a perfect time to make a modification. And as you can see by the amount of oil that's come out of this thing, it was the right thing to do taking that buck box out because you're never going to be able to drain and clean all of that out. So we're going to need a new one. <laughs> that exhaust is absolutely full. Mate, oh my. Just doing an oil change on your There's box. more in that exhaust than there is in the engine bay. I found the rest of your lost oil. I only cut, the I only cut it because I couldn't find the bung. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow so that's where the rest of the oil is that's a ridiculous you amount know i said to you you normally take them off and leave them upright for about a week oh, you can see why because that is ridiculous first time i've seen I it because really i've never done a turbo before i found it really funny the first time i've seen it yeah and now you're just like what a surprise <laughs> that is oh wow that is ridiculous so down to my request we actually took the bat box completely off taking the mounts with it this thing weighed so much when we took it off right so it's all turd, <laughs> oil it's all, filter <laughs> that's all turdy that has not had a change in a while while that i think someone's been doing constant oil changes into the exhaust yes definitely as we started to flush the exhaust out it was time to go back up to the front and replace that oil filter as you can see absolutely disgusting the one that came out so as we know the oil has completely left the building in the engine bay it actually took us around eight eight and a half liters to fill the vehicle back up which is quite a lot but because the engine had been completely drained of its oil checking levels as we went it was the right amount to put in right cats on oil's in it's registering let's uh start it up and hopefully <laughs> Nothing goes wrong. See if anything's falling out. Of it, shall I? <laughs> no, you seem to be alright. I'm so worried because I saw all of the oil everywhere, but in the engine, some of it like. Right, so ran for. Just cut the minute. A minute or so. Oil around the engine, make sure there's no leaks. 
And uh, um, we can check the level again. Check the level, make sure it's happy. Put the under trays on. And then she should be good to go. Yeah, we'll take it outside and let it run yeah, right Just make sure it's uh, it's actually all right. Because this is, again, the first time I've actually, I suppose, started the car for a long period of time, other than literally putting it on a trailer. We're going to throw another litre in, just to be happy, just to be sure. Because obviously the oil's going around the engine now. Pulling the vehicle back outside, and although there's going to be a little bit left in the system, of course we did completely drain it as much as possible and flush through all of the exhaust. There still will be a little bit in there, but that will go when I drive it. So with the car back home, we have been able to completely deconstruct the turbo, feed pipes, intercooler, everything, go through the system as well and actually make sure this thing has some longevity but I wouldn't have been able to understand how to take the turbocharger off this vehicle as I've said in previous videos I'm no mechanically minded person and your exact to your car engine type everything is absolutely key when buying completely terrible cars off Facebook especially when they're broken as well with that guys again I'm gonna say thank you so much use code down below Jamie 22 get yourself 22% off with that thank you so much for watching guys we'll see you on the next one